Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q4 and FI22 conference call of Electro Steels Castings Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anut Sonpal from Valorum Advisors. Thank you and over to you Mr. Sonpal. Thank you. Good morning everyone and a very warm welcome to you all. My name is Anut Sonpal from Valorum Advisors. Uh, we represent the Investor Relations of Electro Steel Castings Limited. On behalf of the company, I would like to thank you all for participating in the company's earnings conference call for the fourth quarter and financial year ended 2022. Before we begin, let me mention a short cautionary statement. Some of the statements made in today's earnings con call may be forward-looking in nature. Such forward-looking statements are subject to risks and uncertainties which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated. Such statements are based on management's beliefs as well as assumptions made by and information currently available to management. Audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward-looking statements in making any investment decisions. The purpose of today's earnings conference call is purely to educate and bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and financial quarter under review. Now let me introduce you to the management participating with us in today's earnings call and hand it over to them for opening remarks. We have with us Mr. Sivilai Sentanathan, Vice President of Finance and Corporate Affairs, Mr. V. M. Sridharan, Senior General Manager of Finance, Mr. Nilesh Daga, General Manager of Accounts and Finance, and Mr. Gaurav Somani, Joint General Manager of Finance. Without any further delay, I request Mr. Sentanathan to give his opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Anand. Good morning, everybody. It is a pleasure to welcome you to the earnings conference call for the fourth quarter and financial year ended 2022. Firstly, I hope that everyone is keeping safe and well. Let me first take you through the financial performance on a standalone basis of our company for Q4 financial year 22. The total income for the quarter increased by 35% year on year to rupees 1,584 crores. The data increased by 37% year on year to rupees 233 crores, representing a beta margins of 14.68%. Net profit grew by about 103% year on year to rupees 123 crores, while the fat margin percentage was 7.74%. For the financial year ending 2022, the total income grew by 63% year on year to rupees 5095 crores. EBITDA grew by 60% to rupees 717 crores, representing EBITDA margin of 14.5%. Net profit grew by 148% to rupees 323 crores, while PAT margin improved to 6.39%. On the operational front, the production for the ductile line price for the fourth quarter of financial year 20, 2022 was 1,77,889 cents against the production of 1,64,173 tons during the previous quarter and 1,42,570 in the corresponding quarter in the previous year. For the financial year 2022, the company reported the highest ever textile line pipes production of 6,03,751 tons. We increased the capacity of the textile line pipe plant to 4 lakh tons per annum during the year and the unit in South India. With this, we can now open the floor for the question and answer session. Thank you very much. We'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants, participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. I request to all the participants Please restrict to two questions per participant. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Ladies and gentlemen, I requested not to ask repeated questions. The first question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor and Company. Please go ahead. Yeah, Namaskar sir and uh, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, sir, congratulations on a uh, Continue good set of numbers. Uh, sir, firstly, for the the current capacity uh, which has been enhanced to four lakh at Kala uh, uh, have we got the benefit of entire one one lakh ten factored in for this year, or uh, if you could explain? 
Yes, uh, we have gone into 4 lakh ton capacity in August uh, 2021. Mm -hmm. So since then, gradually we have uh, achieved the 100% capacity. So we are running at 100% capacity now. Uh, correct. And uh, sir, uh, firstly, sir, taking into account the macro environment, uh, especially in terms of the, the fluctuations which we are seeing in the raw material prices, uh, uh, how confident uh, is the company of maintaining these uh, margins and what steps are we taking of further improving the same? And also uh, a point about the pig iron sales, sir, last quarter uh, it was mentioned that uh, we did uh, uh, sold a good quantity of pig iron. And currently, with I think so with Russia and Ukraine crisis uh, still uh, continuing, uh, what have been our big iron sale for this quarter, and uh, what's the uh, outlook going forward? Good morning, uh, Sakeji Gaurav here. Good morning. So, uh, thank you for the uh, appreciation for the results. So, uh, yeah, during this quarter also, our big iron sales were uh, in line with what we did in Q3. So we have sold higher quantity of pig iron. As far as the uh, cost pressures are concerned, uh, yes, the cooking coal prices have moved up. And uh, we have been able to uh, pass it on in uh, our realizations. And uh, we have been trying our best to uh, get the better realizations and pass on the higher cost. Oh. So, so, sir, can we say that the, if there is a complete pass on, uh, or do our, our order book do have uh, an old uh, old backlog wherein we are booked uh, orders earlier and that have to be now executed at lower margin? So, uh, Sakeji, that phenomena will always remain, but as a uh, cautious uh, decision, uh, the management is trying to keep order book at a lower level. We are not focusing on higher duration orders and we are not focusing on long orders long period orders so to just uh, protect ourselves from the uh, cost inflations so can you give some more color on the order book sir so what, what we have yeah so we are having a order book of around uh, four to five months uh, so which is at a comfortable level and uh, if you see our productions we have been operating at around 95 percent capacity Okay, because of our inventory levels on an annual basis have gone up by a more, uh, about 1,000 crores. If you could explain to us uh, uh, the re reason for the same, uh, and I think, so, I think it is the raw material procurement only that has significantly contributed. So just the thought process and also the net debt level, uh, since the finance cost uh, uh, remained somewhat in the similar levels only, but we have improved our business also. So if you could give some more color on the uh, on the debt levels and the way forward, uh, how, what steps are we taking to bring down the, the debt uh, going forward? So Sageji, uh, first of all, on your inventory query, so you're right, inventory has gone up. It's primarily on account of the higher raw material prices. Cooking coal prices have gone up sharply, which has led to increase in the raw material prices as well as the finished good prices. So. Uh, in, in case of inventory, both the raw material prices are up and the finished good prices are up because of which our inventory position is higher by around uh, 900 crores. And uh, because of this particular reason, because of higher working capital requirement, the working capital debt has also gone up. And our net debt uh, as on 31st March would be around uh, say 1800 to 1900 crores, 1900 crores approximately, which is at a comfortable level. Uh, the movement in debt is purely because on account of working capital debt, because of higher working capital requirements. So, so that will be at a lower cost, and the cost of funding would be lower because of uh, lower working capital if you could give the breakup of the cost of funds? Also. Cost of funds would be around uh, 8%. 8% 8, 8%, sir. Okay, thank yes. you. Bookkeeping questions I will take from you uh, later on uh, that will be better in this of time but sir, on the maintaining of this mar uh, mar margin part uh, if you could uh, throw some more uh, uh, light uh, what steps are, are there uh, and uh, are these mar margins EBITDA margins uh, sustainable and for the next year sir uh, are, are you looking for this 95 percent utilization levels uh, to continue and also that one lakh ton more ca additional capacity uh, when are we uh, trying to augment and what kind of capex uh, is there uh, for fi20 
And Sakeji, there are multiple questions in one question. So, uh, see, as far as the beta margin uh, goes, you have seen our past performance. You have seen the performance of every quarter during the year. We have been able to maintain our margins uh, in spite of the rising raw material cost. But uh, the guidance cannot be given on the uh, future quarters. It is not easy for us to give that kind of indications. But of course, yes, the company will always try to maintain margins. And uh, the capacity expansion, we are already now at uh, 4 lakh tons in our Kalasi unit. And uh, both the units are operating at around 95 to 100% capacity utilization. In fact, in Q4, uh, the Kalasi unit was at 100% nearly. So the benefit of higher capacity will uh, come in uh, uh, this financial year, full financial year. Because in last financial year, it was for half year. So of course, that is there. And uh, yes, uh, we are trying our best to uh, maintain the profitability. Right. And for that expansion of 1 lakh, sir, 1 lakh ton uh, additional, we were planning to make it to 5 lakh at Kalas. Yes. So that is definitely on the cards and uh, we are working towards it. But uh, because most of the equipments will be coming from China and China is into, uh, you know, a, a kind of lockdown situation. So uh, we are not able to move uh, in, a, in the pace that we had thought so. So it is taking little time. Okay, so it, it, it will be delayed, sir. right? Somewhat, yes. Okay. Any timelines that you want to set for, for that capacity to, to come into screen? So Sakeji, see, uh, the capacity built up will take around, uh, you can say, 21 to 24 months time. And once the China reopens, we'll be able to start. Correct. So I'll come in the queue for my follow-up. Uh, only for the EBITDA margin part, sir, if you could, if it could, have, if you could have done more, we would have got some more color. Taking into account the the increase in inventories and all, uh, are we insulated from the vagaries of this co uh, the fluctuations in the coking coal prices? Since we are carrying a lot of uh, uh, inventory both at uh, the raw material front and also for the finished part. Sakeji addressed this query earlier. I said uh, we are keeping our order book in a uh, narrow range. We are not going overboard just to uh, you know take in uh, take care of the uh, raw material cost, the inventory that we have. So yes, we are uh, trying to uh, pass on the higher cost. But yes, the cooking coal prices have gone up sharply last quarter. Right. Sir. I'll come in the queue, sir. And thank you, Gaurabji, and, and all the best to the team. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is, from the line of Sanjay Dam from Oldbridge Capital. Please go ahead. Good morning, uh, gentlemen. Uh, a good set of numbers. Uh, just wanted to get a sense of uh, how much uh, uh, revenues we booked on uh, big iron sales uh, for the entire FY22. Good morning, Sanjayji. Uh, thank you. I'll, I'll help you with that figure. Just a second. They did around uh, 330 uh, crores of uh, pig RNCs. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much. And uh, a sense of uh, uh, how you want to... Uh, so uh, the good part is that uh, most of the debt is uh, because of working capital. So as and when... Uh, things normalize, uh, uh, I guess the requirement of the builders will uh, come off. Uh, but uh, can we say that, uh, broadly speaking, uh, the debt has round about peaked uh, uh, around these levels because uh, the business is also throwing up a uh, reasonably good amount of cash. So Sanjay ji, the revenue is a factor of the uh, raw material, the input cost. If uh, input prices remain here, so we can see the debtors will peak out here. Because uh, now we are at almost peak prices of cooking coal. I don't know the prices have kind of stabilized. So it would be fair to assume that we are at the peak. And finally, uh, and finally uh, 
uh, till the time we move from four to five uh, lakh tons of uh, DIPI, uh, it would be fair to assume that the pig iron sales would uh, continue uh, around the current levels. Uh, Sanjay ji, this is uh, depending on the uh, prices, the DI prices, the factor of DI prices, uh, what uh, realizations we are getting. It, at, at, at points, it is advantageous to uh, sell more of pig iron because uh, we, this is basically uh, on cash basis. And uh, for last couple of months, the contribution was also very nice, very good. So uh, the management decision was to uh, sell more of pig iron. I mean, increase the quantity of pig iron. So it will depend on uh, the factors, the situation prevails. Perfect, gentlemen. Uh, thank you so much for answering my questions and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. The next question is from the line of Deepak Pundar from Sapphire Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hello. Uh, thank you very much sir, for the opportunity. So firstly, I wanted to understand on the volume front. Uh, uh, now, uh, I think uh, 6 lakhs odd uh, DI pipe volume uh, we did in last year, FI22. So how do we see volume growth over FI23 and maybe next uh, two to three years? Uh, uh, some 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 outlook on that would, would be helpful. Uh, good morning, Deepak ji. So you're right. This year we did around 6 lakh tons of DI pipes. Uh, when we've stepped in this in this financial year, we'll be operating our uh, plants at full capacity. The one lakh ton expansion that had happened in our southern unit will be available for the entire full year. So that will come into play. Uh, there we have a capacity of four lakh tons, and uh, in the eastern unit we have a capacity of around uh, 280 to three lakh tons. So uh, we hope that we'll be able to do around seven lakh tons in FI 23, or maybe plus minus uh, five percent. Okay, and and then what would drive the growth uh, in coming years? Maybe the FI twenty four, twenty five, because you'll be almost hundred percent utilization level, right? This year. So if you see the past track records, we have done uh, expansions at various phases. Again, uh, as we mentioned earlier, the phase two of another one to one and a half lakh tons of DIP expansion is there on the boards. Uh, we are just waiting for China to open up, which will take around two years time. Uh, so that will uh, come uh, into uh, you know uh, production after two years, and uh, during this time we have also done uh, backward integrations in terms of we have set up ferro silicon plant, silicon manganese plant. We have increased our power capacity. So these are also adding to both top line and the bottom line. Okay, okay. And what's the capacity you mentioned? This phase two after uh, the which is coming after two years. So we are aiming for something around one and a half lakh tons. 1.5 lakh tons. So that, that's likely to come by May 24. That's what you're saying, right? Hopefully, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I understood. And and how do we see EBITDA per ton? Uh, I think uh, currently we are at in the range of 11 to 12,000, right? Yes. So... Uh, EBITDA per ton is around uh, 10 to 11,000 tons. Blended, this is blended EBITDA of all the products. And the focus is to maintain this EBITDA at least, uh, you know, minimum in this range. 10 to 11,000? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, I, I understand. Yep. Th that's it from my side. All the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chetan Falke from Alpha Invesco Research. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Sir, uh, do we procure any pig iron for our, uh, from outside for our West Bengal plant and as well as our uh, Chennai plant, uh, the cast iron plant? And uh, what are the volumes? Good morning, Chetanji. Uh, the plants that we have are backward integrated. So we have our own glass furnace in uh, both the units. So we don't need to buy pig iron from outside sources. Okay, so there is no external purchase uh, whatsoever of oh, pig iron? No. Okay, okay. And sir, uh, what was our export volume for FY21 uh, and 22? So, FY21, 22 uh, exports of DI pipes was, yeah, DI pipes exports was around uh, 22 to 23% of the total uh, DI pipe volumes. Okay, for both the years, 22 to 23%. Yes, yes. 
Okay, okay. And uh, going forward, uh, can you throw some color on uh, the uh, the export opportunity going forward? Uh, it's a given uh, the fact that US is planning to replace their lead pipes. Also, electro steel as a firm, we have a big global uh, presence. I mean, uh, we have uh, 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 a sizable operation overseas. So, can you just throw some light on how are we poised to uh, grow our volumes in export markets? What percentage of global trade we are uh, 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 we are controlling right now, etc. Uh, so, uh, fair question, Chetanji. So, there are tremendous opportunities available in the overseas market, and electro steel casting has been into overseas market since last two decades. And we have been catering to almost all the uh, major countries like uh, Europe, UK, US, Singapore, Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka to a very nominal uh, share, uh, Middle East. So we are uh, basically present in this areas, in this geographies since last two decades. And uh, 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 from electricity, when we were exporting, we were exporting around 50% of the total products. Now with Kala has the merged into castings, we have uh, uh, bigger opportunities available at our hands and we are focusing to increase our export share. We also want to be present in the domestic market, be a leader here and also want to you know, capitalize on the opportunities available in the overseas markets. We have a, a big setup, big team uh, which are into export uh, markets. We have around 10 subsidiaries in each of the countries. Uh, to establish our position there as a you know long term player, and uh, yes, uh, we have uh, the uh, major approvals in place in uh, Europe, US markets which are required to sell pipes. So uh, we have plans to increase our exports going forward, where the margins are also high, superior to uh, domestic margins, and uh, slowly and gradually we'll increase our export share. I hope I've addressed your query. Yeah, yeah. What, what is the uh, uh, realization and uh, let's say EBITDA pattern profile for exports? So uh, compared to domestic, uh, the realizations uh, would be higher by around say 3,000 rupees to 4,000 rupees per ton. Okay, okay. And uh, that entire realization can flow to... This basically, uh, 3,000 rupees per ton is not, sorry, uh, this is not the realization which I'm saying, it's the uh, 3,000 rupees ton around the margins, the EBITDA margins. Okay, the margins are um, higher by 3,000 rupees per time. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Now, post, uh, once we merge electro steel and uh, Srikala, is it possible, let's say we are uh, exporting from our Srikala unit as well under the brand of electro steel, is that possible? Or we have to take a plant based uh, approval? So, Kala is already merged with uh, electro steel. Mm -hmm. Effective 31st December. And uh, yes, plant based, some uh, approvals would be required for which uh, we are already working on it. Okay, so we can say that incrementally uh, we can, uh, because till now we are not exporting anything from Srikala. Going forward that situation continues. No, no. Very uh, nominal uh, export is there, yeah. To, to add what Dauro said, sir, <clears throat> we are already exporting to Singapore and other countries from Kalahasti. As he said, mm -hmm. now our endeavor is to increase the exports from Kalahasti also. So we will gradually increase it. Now we are doing... Uh, uh, whatever we are doing, we will increase it, maybe 10% of our capacity. Uh, we plan to increase from the Kala C unit. Go ahead, okay. uh, Gaurav. Yeah, that's from my Okay, okay. So, uh, can we say that uh, uh, our incremental volumes of 2 lakh tons, half of it can go to exports, half of it can go to domestic going forward? Is, uh, can that happen, let's say, over the course of next three, four years? Uh, that will definitely be our, uh, you know, objective. That is our vision. So let's see how it pans up. Thank you. Yeah. So just one last question, sir. If you look at the capacity additions by the industry, uh, so uh, Tata Metalics, uh, Wellspun Corp, they are also going, uh, uh, they are going some, they are doing some six lakh tons of capex combined together. At the same time, Vedanta, KIO, CL, and Sandur Magnin, they have also got some environmental clearance. So how do you see this uh, supply side dynamics uh, playing out over the next three, four years, given that almost million tons of capacity is proposed? And how, how much of it do you think is viable? So Chetanji, in the last uh, 15 years, there have been capacity addition. Tata Metalics came into uh, picture. Gentles also came into pictures in the last 15 years. And the uh, capacity enhancement has started happening in the last uh, three, four years. 
uh, in last 3 4 or 5 years where uh, kalasti had also increased the capacity tata metallics is also now increasing the capacity kalasti is again increasing the capacity it's all because there's lot of demand the uh, government pushed to you know uh, supply of drinking water to each and every household this creates lot of uh, demand for the uh, di pipes and di pipes is one of the most uh, suitable pipe for transportation of water because of its characteristics so uh, you know the expansions and the capacity coming up we don't see any uh, concern in fact it's good for the market uh, and uh, uh, i think uh, i mean and this is also not a fragmented industry they are very limited and renowned players so it's i mean we appreciate this uh, expansions happening uh, we just wanted to understand the sustainability of this demand let's say what happens once amrut uh, uh, nal se jal is fully implemented then what happens to these capacities i mean is the can the industry absorb uh, incremental capacity of let's say another million ton on a sustainable basis going forward in fact that's what i was trying to understand and how how so is it is it a possibility going forward i'm um, looking sir actually na sir water is very important for each and every one now you will see the cities are expanding cities are expanding and even not only in india everywhere all over the world so there is you know the market is growing and you will see both uh, i mean our electro steel both the units have been increasing the capacity gradually we are not doing you know at a time and whenever we do the capacity increase our production is fully i mean sold there is no question of not selling and the capacity utilization is 100% so we don't uh, you know foresee any i mean gap between production and uh, sales mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay okay so even after this null se jal uh, uh, mission is complete we see a sustainable demand uh, north of 2 million tons going forward at a country level is that the correct yes, understanding yes. from what you said yes okay. sir okay 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 all right sir that's it from mine thank you very much thank you next question is from the line of maluchu bhatiai from force water capital please go ahead yes hello congratulations team and thank you for the opportunity i have three questions uh, one is in continuation of the uh, previous uh, query that in terms of the new capacities which are coming up uh, do we see uh, any challenge in terms of uh, margins uh, being squeezed because of the competition and uh, secondly uh, how many uh, out of the total orders how much is uh, the government uh, related uh, orders and do we see any issue in terms of allocation from the budget i mean there is a budget announced it's a huge budget towards nal se jal but uh, uh, how much uh, is already allocated and how slow it would be or how can we expect it uh, going forward and lastly uh, the captive power currently uh, accounts for how much of the power consumption and going forward uh, any plans with regards to captive power and the savings from the same hi uh, so uh, so most of the most of the orders or uh, uh, you know for say uh, the entire orders comes from government bodies only ultimately the buyers of the di pipes are government bodies who come out with tenders and either they procure the pipes directly or they uh, you know do it through the epc contractors so for us the end customers are government bodies only in terms of margins uh, uh, in uh, when the competition comes in see competition is already there it's just that the capacity is going up slightly maybe by around 10 15% right now we have a industry capacity of around 2 and a half million tons which is expected to go to around 3 million tons and there is ample demand for pipes so we don't see any concern on the uh, you know ebitda so this is the kind of minimum ebitda which every player needs to maintain uh, what was your third query uh, it was regards to captive power so captive power we have around 40 megawatt of capacity which is fully operational and uh, uh, we are procuring around you can say uh, mr shridhar if you can confirm, uh, confirm uh, i think we are procuring 25 to 30% of power from outside rest is being captively consumed yes okay just uh, one more clarification so as you mentioned that uh, uh, predominantly the client uh, remains uh, government tenders and orders so do we see any challenge in terms of uh, how what will be the pace of these orders coming through because i think in past we've seen some challenge in that regard in terms of uh, allocation of the budget 
madam i i want to add only one thing uh, to what mr gaurav said <clears throat> the usage of the di pipe which was hither to for water and sewage is now extended to even irrigation so whatever you know irrigation projects that are coming up also di pipe will be used so that allocation also will come number one is the government of india and all the state governments have real so sorry to interrupt you but your voice is breaking uh about now hello yes, yes sir go ahead so now realizing that you know the water is very important the central government has started a separate department nal se jal and you know the supply of water from the source to the households which you know initially started in the state of telangana is now extended to orissa and is being extended to andhra tamil nadu like that every state will be doing this so we do not foresee any dirt for order of or a demand for ductile line pipe thank you okay uh, that would suffice thank you so much thank you very much participants you may press star and 1 to ask a question the next question is from one of sahil sangvi from monarch network capital please go ahead yeah uh, hello good morning and uh, thank you for the opportunity the person you are speaking with has put your call on hold hello am i audible yes sir go ahead yes um it's so a good morning and thank you for the opportunity to ask a question um i have three set of questions one uh, uh, as as per what the previous participant was asking on the export market uh could you throw some light on the demand that you're seeing i mean you explained uh, a lot on the supply side how it is all placed but uh, what kind of demand would you be uh, seeing from a couple of these geographies like us and europe etc uh good morning sahil ji so uh, see we uh, we are present in exports since last two decades as i mentioned earlier and we have been a very consistent player the uh, we have Till now, not been able to ramp up our export, uh, you know, uh, volumes because we have limitations. We also wanted to be ser- servicing the domestic market. So till now, we were exporting around 40 to 50 percent of our volumes to the entire global market. And uh, markets like US, Europe, uh, Middle East, they have huge opportunities. And uh, with the uh, Major of Kalhas, we have now more uh, opportunities available in terms of supplies for Marsalt because Kalhas is sitting at a capacity of four lakh tons, so that will give us a room to uh, you know uh, push out more to overseas markets. As far as demand goes, there is ample demand because every place like similarly like India, the uh, pipes. di pipes are the best suited pipes for transportation of water and uh, uh, as in uh, as the city grows it becomes uh, important to connect uh, you know uh, all the areas with underground pipelines so you know my because of that reason the demand is continuously growing as other uh, participants were also mentioning about these schemes that are coming into play so what i would like to add is see these schemes have come into picture in the last 4 to 5 years or maybe 6 years but the demand was there government is already focusing on uh, transporting water by bringing in these schemes the uh, focus increases of the government it adds on to uh, the uh, you know uh, for the potential of uh, di pipe requirement going forward also this is not expected to come down because the old pipes or the earlier pipes because this di pipes is not a very old technology it's a kind of new technology which has come into uh, 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 in india since last uh, maybe 20 25 30 years so the old pipes also needs to be replaced and because of that the demand will keep continuing okay okay Uh, so my second question is regarding to the cost. Now, uh, uh, possible to uh, tell us that what was your uh, okay, quarter on quarter increase in the coking coal cost that you procured? Uh, Q4 versus Q3. Q4 versus Q3, the cost has gone up, and uh, it has gone up by around uh, I think uh, five five thousand rupees a ton. 
Okay, and um, uh, the uh, Q one twenty three is still not yet complete, but uh, till now, uh, what kind of surge are you seeing again? Uh, Q one versus Q four. I mean, uh, on the cooking coal front. So cooking coal prices have been uh, very erratic. It uh, went up from it came down from five hundred dollars to three hundred eighty dollars. Uh, in fact, six seventy dollars to three eighty dollars. Then again, it right. went up and is right now hovering at around five hundred dollars. So right. it's very difficult to give you exact number of what will happen in Q1 because uh, we have uh, we have some inventory of uh, earlier bookings and uh, some you know now fresh stock is also coming in. So average cost will definitely go up. Uh, but yes, uh, the prices are uh, up from what it used to be. Right, right. And Q4 versus Q3, you said five thousand rupees, right? Increase of five thousand in the conventional yes. Right, right, right. And uh, uh, a request if you can provide a split on the uh, the revenue since we have a couple of uh, uh, segments. Um, what we would like to also understand is how the realizations for DIPs are moving. So possible to give the breakup of revenue for uh, say at least the DIPI revenue for Q4 and uh, full year. DIPI revenue we can help you with. Uh... So for the full year, DIPI revenue was around thirty-five hundred crores. Okay, and what was this number for Q4? Q4 it was around eleven hundred fifty crores. Okay, okay, and uh, when it comes to this, uh, the pricing of DIPI, are you are you seeing uh, um, uh, an exponential surge because one of your competitors was uh, very heavily commenting on the deficit market scenario, which is led to pricing uh, going high and the new contracts coming at uh, very high prices, almost twenty five thirty percent higher. So, are you seeing a similar phenomenon? Yeah, so prices are going up. And the new orders which are coming in and are coming at higher prices, uh, though it's it's a bit of challenge to pass on the entire increased cost uh, to the end customer. But uh, uh, but definitely uh, the maximum part, the maximum increase in cost is getting passed on. So the new orders are coming at higher prices now. Right, right. Uh, thank you, thank you for answering all my questions. Just a request if you can provide the split of uh, revenue going forward in your presentation. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kaushik from our, from Vermilion Family Office. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I'd like to know uh, how what is the uh, cost leadership for electricity globally? If you do the cost curves, uh, in which quadrant would uh, electricity operations fall? Both the both the production sites. And also, what is your global market share, and how competitive are you vis-a-vis -vis, uh, large Chinese companies? Very tough queries, uh, Kaushik ji. So, uh, in terms of cost, I'll not be able to give you, you know, uh, where we stand globally. It's difficult for us. There are uh, many players, and mainly uh, the bigger players from China are Saint Gobain and uh, Zinzing. So we have not done that kind of comparisons. We neither have those data also with us. So I'm sorry, I'll not be able to answer your queries. Uh, what about your global market share? Uh, we have not done such studies uh, from India. See, uh, we are, I think, uh, only two players are into exports. One is Electro Steel, and the other, I think, is Gentle Saw. And the overseas market is uh, big enough. So. Uh, I am not sure what is our share, but uh, we are fairly pleased. And uh, one more question: What is the current status of Parbat Four? Do you see any action in the next maybe year? On you know, Parbat Four, uh, so see, we is uh, stuck since long, and we are yet to receive the compensation amount. It's it's kind of going very slow, to be honest. Uh, Whenever the compensation comes in, it will be a huge uh, gain for us. But uh, since the uh, request is to the government, since the request is now with the government, with the Ministry of Coal to clear the file, to give a timeline is also a big challenge for us. One question just related to the global market share. So, would it be right to say that India produces around 25-30% uh, of the total DIP production in the world? That we are quite a large producer. 
Kashik ji, I don't have those kind of data with me, so I'm sorry, I'll not be able to answer you. Maybe if my colleagues can answer, uh, Mr. Shizan, if you have the data. Uh, no, because as you rightly said, we have not uh, done that. <coughs> Maybe we will come back to you, sir. I think you should excuse us. No, no, that's fine, sir. Just uh, this would be actually, sir, to a small point that actually the size and scale and the leadership of the company are not that much appreciated in the market. So I think this data is placed in the right frame. Frame of reference will help the company, sir. That's my humble uh, request to you. Uh, no, Kaushik ji. So uh, if you if you see the India market, we are the leader in Indian market. We have around 30 to 30, 32 percent market share. So. Uh, I mean, the size, if you see the India market, we are the largest. Yeah. Uh, one more thing is that uh, uh, in the future, would the company be open to buy back uh, now that the uh, balance sheet is on a very strong footing and uh, that uh, cash flow is also very strong? Uh, so we can't answer that. That all depends on the management on the board of directors. We don't have any answer to that at the moment. And also, uh, any thoughts on a dividend policy? Are you planning to announce one which will kind of give us some guidance how we will be uh, providing dividends over the next four or five years? So, if you see the dividend history, there's no dividend policy as such, but if you see the dividend history, the company has been dividend paying company throughout its uh, tenure. And we have been paying dividend depending on the profits that we are generating. This year also, since the profit was, profit was uh, good, we have paid healthy dividend. We have declared healthy dividend subject to approval of shareholders. Sir, to add uh, what Mr. Gaurav said is we have to take a holistic decision or the directors uh, will be taking a holistic decision as to how much funds are required for expansion and all other requirements and accordingly the amount uh, is being recommended, sir. Okay. So in November call of Kalahasi, you had mentioned that there could be some opportunities and people asked that what would be the usage of cash you had mentioned that there would be some potential opportunities uh, for acquiring distressed assets. Uh, are they still on the horizon, sir? Uh, like, uh, you know, the, the, one, the one which we thought may not be there now, but we are also looking for various options, sir. We have not closed our uh, this one. We are looking for something. So would it be right to say that you do have an inorganic uh, growth policy? Uh, sir, I can't comment anything right now, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I request all the participants, please restrict to two questions per participant. If time permit, please come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. The next question is from the name of Chetan Falke from Alpha Invesco Research. Please go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your opportunity. But you are talking about uh, opportunity. Chetan, sorry to interrupt you. Your audio is not very clear. May I request you to speak through the handset? Yeah. Can you, can you hear me now? So there is still an echo from your line. Just. Hello. Am I yes, audible now? Perfect. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, sir, you are talking about uh, opportunity emerging from irrigation sector. So, uh, are these like uh, large diameter pipes and what is the margin profile diameter wise? As in, we make more margin. No, the, these are higher diameter, diameter pipes. pipes. Mm -hmm. Higher diameter pipes, but then margins will be same. You know, whatever margin we get, maybe it's a bit more. But mm -hmm. you know, domestic market, the margins will be almost similar. The usage okay. of the product will go up. Okay. So the demand will go up. The diameter, diameter profile won't change anything. That's what you're saying. No, it will be a bigger diameter. Mm -hmm. No, but that won't impact our margins. That's what uh, uh, is that understanding correct? Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And sir, just going back to exports. I mean, we are exporting almost 100 million dollars worth of DI pipe since last five seven years on a consistent basis. So, what percentage of our exports are going to U.S. markets and European markets? Because I think our U.S. market share is very small. In U.S., we are barely selling. Some 50, 60 crores uh, worth of DIP. The rest of it is going to Europe and uh, Middle East. Uh, so, do we see uh, uh, US market uh, becoming a larger pie of our exports, or do we see Europe itself going up going forward? 
right so uh, you are right uh, europe is the uh, you know europe is contributing contributing to our exports uh, to the maximum extent uh, of late in last 3 4 years uh, us market has also gone up earlier we were uh, around uh, you know 3 4% of our turnover export turnover were coming from us which has now gone up to around 6 7% europe is contributing around uh, 45 to 50% Middle East markets have also gone up. Middle East is also contributing around 25 percent, and uh, we are still trying to. We are still focusing and trying to increase our share in U.S. market. So for us, primarily the main uh, uh, export countries are Europe, uh, Middle East, and then uh, U.S. and uh, rest of the parts of Asia. Okay. Okay. Sir. Um, um... can can you throw some light on the size of our global operations as in how many employees we have overseas and what is the fixed cost uh, cost that we incur every year uh, on our global operations so uh, see most of the subsidies in fact all of the subsidies that we have are more of marketing arms of the company which do you know uh, stock and sale they with the operating stock and sale method they are there's no much of value addition happening there the complete finished products are being shipped out from india so we have a very small base of employees who are mainly to mainly the marketing uh, profile and uh, the presence is required to uh, in all the areas just to ensure that uh, we have a long term presence and we get repeat orders so uh, it's it's not that we have a very high uh, fixed cost uh, setup okay but roughly what would be the fixed cost uh, north of 50 70 or crores per year i uh, will come back to you on that we we'll have to check because we have uh, you know 10 subsidiaries so we don't have numbers handy for each of them okay okay is it just one last question how are the payment terms in export markets i mean the working capital days are lesser in exports and more in domestic uh, i mean our uh, return on capital employed wise uh, which operation is uh, better on payment terms so in terms of uh, working capital cycle it's the other way around the working capital involvement in case of exports is higher compared to domestic it is because see uh, the shipping time is higher to areas to regions like europe and us so uh, normally you can say if uh, in domestic market say we are getting in x days the receivables in export market it would be around say 1.75 to 2x mm-hmm. so working capital cycle is uh, elongated in the export regions and it is getting compensated by higher uh, contribution higher profitability mm-hmm. okay okay and just one last question sir i mean uh, are there any limitations to uh let's say uh, for example uh, can we cater to southern markets or central uh, markets from our west bengal plants or uh, is there any limitation because of the higher transportation cost or what is the barrier for us i mean let's say we can do business in maximum 5 600 kilometers of periphery uh, from a plant is, is there something like that just like uh, for cement uh, uh, company logistics oh, well, is a freight, cost uh, mm-hmm. freight plays a major role but uh, <clears throat> there is no problem in southern and western markets are being catered by our kalasi plant and uh, eastern market and uh, northern markets are catered by our uh, calcutta plant so we don't find uh, you know the disadvantage of the higher freight affects us thank you chetan i'll request to come back in the question queue for a follow up question i request all the participants please restrict to two questions per participant The next question is from the line of Ravi, a retail investor. Please go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for taking my question. Some uh, previous questions are a set of uh, numbers, and my question is related to vision um, uh, about the management. Can you share some insights on the visions uh, for the uh, for this company for the next five years or ten years? Where do we see this company in the next five years, and what is the vision of the management? good afternoon ravi ji so see uh, electro steel castings limited has been a dominant player in the ductile iron pipe industry since uh, maybe uh, last three decades we are focused very focused on the di pipe segment and we are revolving around that product only this this is our main product which is bread and butter and uh, we have been trying to uh, integrate our operations to the best extent possible 
uh, over the last uh, many years, we have done backward integration in terms of uh, enhancing our uh, power plant capacity, setting up ferrosilicon, silico manganese plant, uh, setting up our own paint plant, uh, increasing the capacities by demodel necking, uh, forward integration also we have done. So we are uh, leaders and we uh, and the you know the management has expertise in uh, this field. So, and uh, so in Kala Hasti unit also we have increased the capacities which used to be around 50,000 tons around uh, 15 years back now which has gone up to 4 lakh tons and which will further go up to 5.5 lakh tons. So clearly the vision is to focus on this segment which is a growing segment and uh, since we are the leaders so we have a established brand and uh, we are uh, looking to cater uh, to this uh, segment uh, you know uh, more uh, fruitfully and uh, beneficial uh, thank you sir in terms of uh, targets uh, do we do you have any targets are you tracking for ne next five years or 10 years where do we see the revenues in the next five, 10 years uh, see, do, uh, see we we plan we plan to be the largest producer of ductile and pipe in India. So now we are planning uh, one and a half lakh tons capacity expansion in Kalahasti and about 50,000 in our Calcutta plant. So it will add up to our capacity. At least in the next five years, we will add up our capacity and we will be fully uh, forward and backward integrated uh, plant in terms of you know all the materials and other things. So that is our vision. And we also want to be the lowest cost producer of ductile and pipe in India and also in the world. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, can you, if you can add the vision in the presentation, it will be helpful, sir, going forward. Sure, we will do that and your uh, thing is well taken. Thank you. The next question is from the land of Nikhil Goel, individual investor. Please go ahead. Um, Good, good morning, sir. My question is, sir, uh, like uh, as you said earlier that the raw material cost is increasing. Will it affect the uh, profit margins in near future? Uh, good morning, Mr. Ji. So, uh, yes, the raw material prices are rising and it has been rising since last four quarters. Every quarter it has been rising cooking coal prices and till now we have been able to successfully pass it on to the end uh, consumers and we have also tried our best to reduce our uh, cost uh, you know uh, cost levels uh, so going forward see we cannot give any concrete reply uh, how it will work out but yes we are uh, trying to maintain the margins okay and secondly sir can you just tell me the like what is your trade receivables? We have around 1000 crores of trade receivables as on 31st month. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor and Company. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity uh, again, sir. Sir, as, as mentioned by the, you, Gaurabji, that uh, the EBITDA margins are higher in case of export. But, uh, sir, uh, could you please explain then why our consolidated numbers, uh, PBT, uh, are lower by around 10 crore? Uh, I'm talking about the standalone PBT at 153 crore and the uh, consolidated at 143 crore. Sakeji will have to, you know, uh, uh, take some time out and go through the numbers and come back to your query. Please allow us to come back to you. Okay, post the call, sir. I will give a call and then get it answered. Sure, sure, sir. Sure. Sir, in the in the DI fitting uh, part, sir, we have this 15,000, 16,000 capacity for a long time. Uh, are we uh, augmenting any capacity? addition here also sir and uh, and uh, how are the margins i think so the margin for the fitting segment is uh, higher so uh, are we contemplating anything in, in this direction uh, sakit i'll correct you here uh, in fitting cap in fittings uh, our capacity used to be around 5000 tons to 6000 tons around 3 to 4 years back we have again done capex uh, here 
and we have increased the capacity to around uh, 16 17000 tons at the moment so last year we were able to produce around uh, 15 six, let, just let me tell you we have produced uh, uh, we have produced around uh, 20000 tons uh, in uh, last financial year so if you compare in 3 4 years we have already done 4x of what we used to do earlier thank you the next question is from the line of kaushik shekhar from vermilion fam- family office please go ahead uh, sir uh, could you just tell us what 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 is the plans for the chennai plant what is the current status and how you propose to use the, the ci plant uh, in chennai and also one more thing is that whether uh, it is legally possible for you also to be a participant in case parbatpur comes up for bidding and whether you have any interest in that because i understand that you have built tremendous expertise in in this mining and it does seem to be a good uh, stand alone business thank you so uh, ci pipe is the old technology is the earlier technology and di pipe is a new technology we are uh, producing a very nominal quantity of cast iron pipes to cater to the demand which is available in that region nothing more than that nothing beyond than that we are not making very uh, you know uh, it's it's not contributing to our uh, overall uh, much to our overall ebitda so we are producing around say uh, 30000 tons and uh, it's a self sustainable plant so uh, there's uh, there's no uh, you know uh, kind of uh, very broader vision on uh, that particular plant as far as mines goes it's very difficult to comment because uh, as you know this uh, our our uh, compensation is in litigation or we have you can say we have been requesting the government to clear our compensation last 7 years from last 7 years so and uh, as of now uh, we have no clarity or we as, as i mean we have no uh, uh, vision to uh, participate or uh, in the mine at the moment we'll take the call as and when it comes thank you sir thank you thank you the next question is from line of sudarshan mal from dansuri investments please go ahead hello uh, thank you sir uh, most of my questions have been answered i just want a bookkeeping number uh, what is the gross debt and net debt at present gross debt as on Hello. 31st march can you hear me hello <coughs> yes yes i can hear you yeah. gross debt as on yeah, 31st march gross debt as on 31st march was around 2700 crores and uh, net debt would be around uh, 1900 crores so did you say 27 and 19 right hello Yes, twenty-seven hundred and nineteen. How much is working capital at? And how much is working capital? Working capital is around seventeen hundred crores. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Due to time constraint, that will be the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to the management from Electro Steel Castings for closing comments. thank you all for the particip- uh, all for the active participation uh, in this con- conference call i thank valorum team and uh, urban clamp uh, team uh, for uh, supporting to have this uh, conference call uh, successfully i wish uh, you all to keep safe thank you all thank you very much on behalf of electro steel castings limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your lines